So in principle, David, we can deal with the thermal noise by cooling everything down as close to absolute zero as possible, however impractical that might be in practice. Yes. Um, and you can also improve things by getting this ultra pure materials. But that's going to get rid of the thermal noise. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, a more fundamental of it, which is quantum mechanical noise. Even if you cool something down as much as you like, it's still going to be moving because of the uncertainty principle. That's right. What can we do about that? Is that hopeless? Because mm -hmm. that's, once again, much bigger than what we're trying to mm -hmm. measure. Yes, the uh, quantum noise, as you've learned in the course, is, is, affects everything. In, 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 in terms of light, it's the light, the light, the quantum noise, which is on the light field, which is affecting our measurements. It's the light that bounces off the mirrors, and it's the light we're using to infer the measurement. So the way we look at uncertainty in a light beam is its amplitude and its phase. There's an uncertainty, we, no matter how well we build a laser beam, in the classical world, we can make a perfect, perfectly measure its amplitude. Quantum mechanics says the amplitude fluctuates. It's kind of like thinking of it as a, as, a, as a stream of photons almost, like a machine gun of photons, they're going to ricochet often in some random arrival pattern. Mm -hmm. So there's the, that's the, uh, the counting effect. The, the, there's a, a number of ways to interpret As a quantum noise. Quantum mechanics. And, the, and this, uh, the, the quadrature or the phase amplitude picture is the one that we like. Okay. They, the, uh, if you want to, in, a, in an interferometer, what we're measuring is a wave coming from one arm and a wave coming from the other arm. And those waves interfere. And what's important is the phase difference between them. We want to measure that phase difference to tell us about what happened to the mirrors. But if the phase is accompanied with some noise, some quantum mechanical noise, once the phases are too similar, we can't separate out the phase anymore. And that's a quantum mechanical limit to how precisely you can measure two phases or the phase difference between two beams. So what can you do about that? I mean, if it's quantum well, mechanics, is there anything you can do? Well, we can't beat the uncertainty principle. And the uncertainty principle tells us that the noise or the, amplitude or the phase uncertainty multiplied by the amplitude uncertainty has a lower bound, Planck's, that, that's the Planck's H bar. Yeah. So, but that doesn't stop us from saying, can we make a laser beam whose phase is very, very precise, but so its amplitude, amplitude is very, very noisy? Now that wouldn't matter if we're trying to measure phase, if we can make a very, very precise phase light beam and we don't care about the amplitude, we can make a precise measurement of phase. So that's called, we do that by using something called squeezing. It's a quantum optics effect. You take a laser beam, you shine it into a nonlinear crystal made of, of periodically polled lithium niobate and, or potassium, whichever one you want to use. That light then undergoes a nonlinear conversion process, and when it comes out, the parametric effect has squeezed the phase but made the amplitude noisy. Is that what's happening here then? Well, it's actually not what's happening in this particular experiment. That's on the table behind me in a big box is our squeezing experiment. Okay. Now, where, where ANU is very, uh, we've done an experiment using this squeezing effect on a four kilometer interferometer in the US, on LIGO. We took a squeezer made in this laboratory over to the US two years ago and demonstrated that this effect works. Okay, so what's and, happening here? Well, the next problem I, I just pointed out is we make the amplitude very noisy. And if you don't care about the amplitude, that's all right. But what is amplitude doing? Those, that laser is hitting the mirrors of our interferometer. So, and it's exerting a force on the mirrors. The, fo the, force, the, noise, the force noise is bigger, the bigger the amplitude noise. So if we put all our noise of our laser beam into the amplitude, we're buffeting the mirrors around now. So while your phase is perfect, it's reflecting the shaking mirrors. It's reflecting the shaking mirrors. This is the, the sort of micro Heisenberg microscope thing. When you try to measure something precisely, you interrupt its motion. So we need to be able to, to use, the, or to, we have to worry about that radiation, it's called radiation pressure noise effect. Now, in the instruments we've built to date, fortunately, where the radiation pressure noise dominates, there's all sorts of other noises we haven't got rid of. There's okay. the seismic noise, the, the uh, thermal noise. But in the generation we're building next, we're going to get, clear all that up and we're going to be faced with quantum radiation pressure noise. And so then, instead of squeezing the phase, we have to squeeze the amplitude. If we make the amplitude very, very precise, then it's not bouncing the mirrors around anymore. 
of the wound that can kill you by giving your amplitude back. But this is where the transfer function of the of the mirror works out. The transfer function of the mirror means that the radiation pressure noise dominates at low frequencies, the quantum noise dominate the photon or shot noise, the phase noise dominates at high frequencies. So we build a squeezer which whose squeeze quadrature, phase or amplitude, varies as a function of frequency and we can capture quantum noise reduction right across the frequency band. It's a fascinating experiment. However, there's it's not been demonstrated before, Paul. This has not been seen. Quantum radiation pressure noise in gram scale interferometers has not yet been observed, let alone the kilogram mirrors in LIGO. So this experiment here is being set up so that we can try and measure quantum radiation pressure noise. So we can then use our squeezes to reduce the quantum radiation pressure noise in this experiment. So we can't build a four kilometer long interferometer in this lab, but we can build something which is called a torsion bar interferometer. So now instead of measuring mirrors which are changing in shape like this, we're using the torsion motion. So one torsion bar is rotating like that, another torsion bar rotates like that, and we measure the separation from the tips of the torsion bar. And this is a very precise, a very clever way to make a very high precision interferometer. Unfortunately, it won't let us measure gravitational waves because the, the length is too small. too small. But it does let us measure, quant hopefully measure quantum radiation pressure noise, and then shine our squeeze states into that and show that we can reduce that noise and how we can reduce that noise so that in, I think we're looking maybe five years in the future, we'll be taking that technology and installing that on the LIGOs and the Virgos.